I'm here at the Democratic Convention in Philadelphia, and I've just spoken with Congressman Brendan Boyle, a first-term congressman who's actually from Philadelphia, where the convention is being held. Give us a sense of what this convention has been like. Yeah, it's been incredible. Of course, I represent Pennsylvania, but also this is my hometown, and represent Philadelphia uh, in the Congress. So for the first time to host a Democratic convention since 1948, it sort of meant double duty for me as a Democratic member of Congress and delegate, but then also as the, the hometown guy. Uh, uh, playing the host role. It's, it's been wonderful. It's been a lot of work, but absolutely worth it. I also think there's a special feeling here because people believe that are about to be a part of something truly historic. Uh, so I think that adds an extra little level of um, specialness to it. Now, how important are conventions? Because we've been, you know, those of us on the campaign trail have been doing this for more than a year. It feels a little bit like a kind of a climax or a, a semi-climax. Is it important to the outcome in November? You know, it's funny. Uh, in this day and age, I, I think there's always talk that, well, conventions are sort of antiquated, and with the primaries, they've outlived their usefulness. And yet then we get to the conventions and you go through the four days and you see the way that it builds unity. I mean, I see the difference here in this convention between day one and where we are at day four. I think the Vice President Biden speeches and President Obama's speech uh, were incredibly important last night to winning over those who might have been holdouts for Hillary. Um, so in the end, even though it doesn't seem like they should still matter, I actually think they really do matter. And also for many of the voters out there, that aren't paying attention during the primary process, the first time they will tune in to see what both parties are about, what both candidates are about, are these convention speeches. Now, you talked a little bit about the kind of the uh, discord at the start of the week. Yeah. On day one, a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters were booing when Hillary Clinton's name was mentioned. Bernie Sanders himself tried to get them to stop. Right. Tonight, or last night in the convention hall when uh, Barack Obama and Joe Biden spoke, it felt from up in the bleachers that people were coming Coming together. To what extent do you think that's true? I had exactly the same feeling. And you know, when I was talking about the speeches that have really helped play a role in that, I talked about President Obama's and uh, Vice President Biden's. I should also mention Senator Sanders' speech himself. I think that was a real turning point for the convention. Bernie's been a, a complete class act. And you know, he largely got many of the things he was fighting for in the platform. A number of them I happen to uh, agree with him while I had endorsed uh, her. Um, I think that really the platform is kind of the best of both worlds. Um, so I, I think that it's important, and I think that we'll leave here completely unified and committed to beating someone who truly is an unelectable alternative in Donald Trump. Now, you have a little bit of experience with the Clintons. You're a first-term congressman. You actually beat Chelsea Clinton's mother-in-law. That's right. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about what is it like running against the Clinton machine? The, the last time they were campaigning in Philadelphia two years ago, I wasn't quite a fan of them being here. Uh, but fortunately, we end, ended up winning that race. Yeah, they're, they're a powerful force. Uh, certainly, huge brand, brand name recognition, uh, mostly favorable on the Democratic side. At the same time, though, it shows you that people end up voting for the candidates themselves and what they stand for. And I like to think voters here in Philadelphia and suburban Philadelphia really pay attention to the issues and who the candidates are. And the celebrity part helps. Uh, but in the end, it's about the candidates themselves and the kind of campaigns they run. Now, Pennsylvania is emerging as a swing state in this election. First time, uh, I think 1988, when George Bush won the state, was the last time it went red, went to a Republican. Uh, we were in Manesson in the western part of the state uh, a few weeks ago, and the Democratic mayor uh, in a Republican county told us that he was going to vote for Donald Trump, and, and many of the Democrats there were too. What is happening in Pennsylvania, and, and what do you think are the kind of key issues as we look towards November? Right, I think this is a battleground state. We were in 2000 and 2004, even though we were able to hold it as Democrats. Both of those races were close, and indeed, just four years ago, uh, in the Obama versus Romney race, Obama carried Pennsylvania by five points. He won nationally by four. So we really were a battleground state. We're only one point more Democratic than the nation as a whole. So it's part of uh, kind of a historic trend that Pennsylvania is always a battleground state. Now you add to that what you observed firsthand that is going on in southwestern Pennsylvania, just really where the great Appalachia region 
of the country begins. Um, that is an area that had historically been Democratic, is trending Republican, and Trump is helping accelerate that. So, okay. I, what is it that's making it trend Republican? I think there are many voters there, and I understand them and fight for them, who feel abandoned by politics as usual. And someone as unorthodox as Donald Trump appeals to anything but politics as usual. And even though he would be absolutely horrible for the average working family of Pennsylvania, I think there are enough people that are fed up that they're willing to try even someone as outlandish as Trump. But even if Trump were the nominee, I think this would be a close state. Um, and I expect that you'll see both candidates spending a lot of time in Pennsylvania and a lot of time in Ohio. Congressman Brendan Boyle, thank you very much for talking to us. All right, thank you. Thank you.